This is the Vega 56, AMD's brute force attempt of competing with Nvidia. But seven years on, can this GPU still play modern games? Well, there's only one way to find out how this over-engineered graphics card gets on, and that's by benchmarking it. In 2017, AMD was losing the GPU race against Nvidia, so they dropped Vega to compete, with the Vega 56 being the budget alternative. This was made to compete with Nvidia's GTX 1070, but at the time, and especially now, it consumes a lot more power and it's not really that efficient. Regardless though, the Vega 56 is still a cool card. Not so much in terms of its cooling capability, especially with this MSI Air Boost, but I truly believe it's quite awesome. And that's because instead of having GDDR5 memory, which was popular at the time, it has HBM2. And what this allows for is vastly superior memory bandwidth compared to its regular GDDR5 counterpart. And unlike the GTX 1070, this doesn't have a 256-bit memory bus. In fact, the bus width is 2048 bits, which is absolutely insane. And in 2024, as a lot of games are becoming a lot more VRAM intensive, the high memory bandwidth of the Vega 56 should surely help out. But to see how this graphics card truly gets on, I've tested it at both 1080p and 1440p in my test bench, which has a Ryzen 5 7600, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory running at 6200 MHz CL32, a two terabyte SN770 Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and an MSI X670E Tomahawk motherboard. Unfortunately, to get the most out of Vega, you do need to do some tweaking, so I've overclocked the memory to 950 MHz, 1000 MHz, 1500 I've increased the power by 50% and I've also gave it a 100 millivolt undervolt. So with that being said, let's see how it gets on. Kicking off the benchmark today with probably the most unoptimized game, Jedi Survivor. And in all fairness, performance on the Vega 56 is much better than anticipated. Yes, 1080p does fall short of 60 frames per second on average, but these are some of the best frame times I've ever seen from this game. 44 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p is probably the closest I've ever seen it to the average, but where things do start to fall apart ever so slightly is 1440p. Not even getting 30 frames per second on average here with a 1% low of 24 is not, well, it's, it's not great performance, let's be honest. But if you were cool with a 30 FPS experience, I mean it is playable, but at the end of the day, I don't recommend 1440p here. Towards the end of last year, AMD made some driver improvements for Cyberpunk with Vega graphics cards, and now on the medium preset with high textures, we can get more than 60 FPS at 1080p. This is a great result, no problems here at all. 1440p in typical Cyberpunk fashion does fall quite far behind the results of Full HD, but in all fairness, 38 frames per second on average, with a 1% low quite close behind that, I'm not really complaining that much. Definitely keep it to full HD though. If you want a taste of some competitive esports experience, you're in luck because 300 FPS in Fortnite is, well, more than playable in my opinion. And just under 200 frames per second on the average for 1440p means performance in Fortnite is absolutely excellent. Yes, the 1% low at full HD isn't particularly the best result ever, but it's Fortnite. The frame time is kind of all over the place in this game but if you wanted more frames there's always the performance api so that's always an option for you as well hogwarts legacy is probably the most surprising game today because the performance across the board today was absolutely excellent on the medium preset the vega 56 narrowly missed out on 80 fps for 1080p and 1440p it narrowly missed out on 60 frames per second in my honest opinion the medium preset with the high textures or even the ultra textures is perfectly brilliant across both resolutions. Yes, it does slightly drop below 60 frames per second at Quad HD, but if I'm honest, it still looks pretty good and I'd be quite happy with that result. God of War sees a very similar performance to Hogwarts Legacy, maybe trailing it ever so slightly getting 77 FPS for the 1080p result and falling short by four frames per second at Quad HD. On the high preset at both resolutions, I'd say the Vega's done quite a good job here. Maybe do some settings tweaking if you want to play at Quad HD though. 
No surprise here, Spider-Man Remastered performs brilliantly at both resolutions, so you won't really be having any troubles on the Vega 56 because it's able to push out at least 60 frames per second at both resolutions with fairly decent 1% lows as well. So as long as you've got a fairly decent CPU, as Spider-Man does seem to be quite CPU intensive, you should be quite good to go in this web slinging action game. Flipping that on its head though is Starfield. This AMD sponsored title is probably one of the worst optimized games I've ever seen. Maybe it's quite close to Jedi Survivor, but both resolutions today, you're not going to be getting that much of a playable experience. Because 45 frames per second on average, with that dropping down to 36 at Quad HD means, I would like to say, yeah, don't get a Vega 56 if you plan on playing Starfield. But to be honest, you're not really missing out that much on Starfield anyways. Full HD gaming performance on the whole today was very acceptable for an upper mid-range card from 2017. Games like Cyberpunk and Hogwarts Legacy surprised me with their performance, especially Cyberpunk as that got more than 60 FPS. Admittedly, most games tested today were on the medium preset, but thanks to that 8GB of HBM2 memory, high and even ultra textures were a possibility, particularly at 1080p today. I didn't run into any VRAM related problems, which is a great sign, and it's almost as if 8GB is fine for rasterized 1080p especially with this sort of memory bandwidth. If you're not chasing high textures and you're chasing high frames instead, good news because in competitive esports titles at 1080p, I would like to say you're set for a sort of 360 hertz experience because the Vega 56 in games like Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege and Counter-Strike, well, two, not Global Offensive, I almost said Global Offensive then, I would like to say this graphics card is good enough to drive a 360Hz monitor. Yes, in Fortnite it did fall short of that 360Hz, but there's always the performance API and as long as you've got a relatively decent CPU, you'll be good to go in these sorts of games. And if you wanted to game competitively at 1440p, I'd say a 144Hz monitor would probably be the most ideal here. Yeah, you could probably get away with a 240 hertz, but you probably won't be maxing out that monitor with the Vega 56. Because of that, 144 hertz at Quad HD should do you quite well with this GPU. Where it will become a struggle for the Vega 56 is AAA games. At 1440p, it simply just doesn't have the horsepower to get a playable frame rate in my opinion. Most of these titles, which were performing quite well at 1080p, will start to struggle at 1440p and because of this keep it to full hd don't really shop for a vega 56 if you're looking to play at 1440p i guess maybe if you wanted to do some settings tweaking or enable fsr 1440p could be a decent option but for the most part i don't really recommend it keep it to full hd so if you can find the vega 56 for around 80 dollars on the used market and if you're cool with a 1080p 60Hz experience in games like Cyberpunk, albeit on the medium preset, but with high textures, oh, I almost dropped it then, the Vega 56 is still a very good graphics card in my opinion. Just make sure you get a Samsung HBM2 variant because this can tolerate higher memory overclocks which does enable a lot more performance on Vega. And even if you wanted to flash your 56, to a 64 which is possible i did try it but it just didn't work for some reason you need the samsung hbm model because it does tolerate high voltages and memory frequencies as well and then of course there is the argument of power consumption it does consume a lot more power compared to the gtx 1070 and it does get very hot especially this msi air boost model so there is that but if you don't care for any of that the vega 56 is still quite a good graphics card in 2024. So if you want to see how a modern budget graphics card gets on there is a video up there. With that being said I'll catch you in the next one.